Hello, my name is Worthy, a professional Valorant coach. If you're looking to climb the ranks and improve your overall gameplay, you definitely want to leave a like and a sub and enjoy the video. Everything you're doing here is fine. Your fade then puts in an orb and she can see the entirety of hookah. Think of your boom bot as a utility for info. You don't necessarily need to use this right now because you have the entirety of hookah cleared up. What you throw second is actually really cool. I don't think I've ever seen someone throw a nade like this. <laughs> it's as funny as that sounds. I have not seen that nade thrown before. Awesome nade. In fact, you could use a nade like that and never have to use your boom bot. You can actually just clear out this corner with that nade altogether. This is actually my favorite round because I'm going to teach you a macro concept about pincering and funneling. So funneling is when you take your forces and you go down a narrow pathway and on either side you have enemies and they're shooting at you from both sides so you're in the middle of hell so you have a little narrow pathway and people are all around you enemies are all around you. so that's funneling now when a team funnels you'll know when they funnel because they end up splitting their force so in this example you're going to see two people in ct and two people in shower and one person dies so they'll be able to shoot you from showers and shoot you from ct i'm going to tell you how to counter that Okay, so they're pushed up here. Okay, do you see that? Yeah. There's one more, so one, two, and your third. So one, two, three, two. And then we know we have two over on B. So we know where everyone is right now. At this point, the guys B are here and maybe here. So Omen's dead. Okay, so now we have two in CT and two in shower. If you know where they are, what are you telling your team to do? What should you tell your team to do? What do you think? TP, maybe. You could. Yeah, that's a good move. You could TP and go back towards B. Definitely. Why not tell everyone to push through CT and fight these guys? If you kill them CT, if all four of you go through and kill them CT, it's a 4v2 at that point, you can go to B at that point and chamber can just rotate back so typically speaking when you see a setup like that where they're split up you don't want to run right down the middle and plant this bomb because they have one and two pathways back into the bomb site you will only have this much control right through here okay if i'm circling around just right through here that's all you have so what you need to do is fight one of the side and i would say that ct might be your best bet but whatever you do you need to do it together and the reason being is that you have numbers it's a 5v4 so using that one person advantage is more than enough to be able to create an opportunity where you can push through and be aggressive on them fade will die soon because they're he's, she's gonna get double peaked and one of the rules i always say so here you go there's your example fade just died i predicted that perfectly um, with with this here, we always want to keep the enemy in front of us. That is one of my ground rules. If enemies are hitting you from multiple sides, then something needs to change. And that's where you typically will say, okay, I got to be aggressive here. There's three sections to a fight in every, every single uh, round. There's the beginning, middle, and end, okay? The beginning is a power struggle for sections of the map. So let's use uh, showers as an example. And we're fighting for showers. So what's going to happen is these will end up the T's will start coming in and they're going to use utility to basically gain control of the space. And what needs to happen then is you need to respond and prevent them from gaining that space. All right, so Molotov for after that point, they're going to push in and then we fall back and then you have to retake space or you need to try to retake space. And that's usually where, say, for example, you have an omen flat and you would go and you would re-push into it and you try to fight for that, for that space. That's called the middle. So like I said before, there's the beginning, which is that initial space control fight, the middle, which is the team trying to retake space on the areas that they really want to have. And then there's the end. Now the end looks like this. So the end looks kind of like this. At this point, this is where the ending starts. This is where they start going to this point. They have control of everything they need to get control of and then they execute into the bomb site. And this is the last fight that happens. So after that's done, they now go into post plant. Post plant is also included in the ending. So you have beginning, which is the initial fight, middle, which is the recontest on that area that they're trying to control. And the ending is the last fight where they're about to execute into the site. The key with being a good defender is to be what I call a toll booth operator. The toll booth operator is trying to tax the enemy team in multiple ways one of them being time so we're trying to bring time down on the clock another one is util and another one would be live or damage or dmg so you're trying to tax them on these four things there's other things you can tax them on too but 
these are four for example if they want to take showers it's going to cost them one player to take that space does that make sense yes if they want to take that space it's going to cost them utility to blast through this smoke so that they can get that space so they have to use utility to get through that space or time they have to wait this smoke out it's going to cost them time to be able to get that space and this is a map where being a toll booth operator is so important because it's all about control based on the map and pushing them to as late as possible start the end fight phase if you are in this situation right now and you're on eco what would you do maybe two options one tag with with fade and push you hole together and trade that trade each other or if i'm playing alone maybe going triple and look for 1v1 so you like wrapping over here and taking a 1v1 or going yeah. into u-haul and trying to work together with a team Okay, I think those are two really fantastic options if you have full buys. If it's two versus two on full buys right now, but you're on eco and taking either of those fights is disadvantageous. Can you win them? 100%, you could. But what would be even better right now is running into the smoke. Run right into the smoke and see if you can force a fight on the guy planting and just try to kill him. We need to remember that we are on eco. When we are on eco, we're trying to just simply damage the enemy's economy. We don't necessarily have to win, but by taking these closer range fights and creating an opportunity for you to get friends you can start to win rounds through your ecos through that you need to think about what are my small victories here and by playing like that and by realizing what gun you have and what advantageous fights you need to take you would immediately say i need to run into the smoke and use it against them so your alt can be used to stall out a rush so let's say for example we we've seen it before where you tried to like Pull your alt out as soon as breach ulted in if you can pop that alt as he breaches in they'll probably stop their their push that would be a good a good time to use your alt probably would have thrown that nade here didn't process like i i just knew that my grenade was bad the idea of the grenade was to bother the entries to not kill my my teammates or rush them see so the way that i thought the reason why you threw this nade for me was that i thought you were throwing it at rays because you were chasing I, I thought you were going for a frag here which no. is what, I, that's what but yeah so my mentality is you toss it here and it prevents anyone else from running out right away and that at least stalls them that was my thought process on that one anyways this was really good i love what you did there you used your utility to get out of the a third fight almost had that perfect that was good even if you don't get that kill, that's like massive. Those three kills are really, really good. I, I even commented like your movement was solid here. Okay, this round, I want to see you combine it, your fade ult with your raise ult and just blasting these motherfuckers. You get like three here, they're fucked. You get two here, they're fucked. Because they're, they're banking on this round. They're banking on this round to continue the round wins. If you win this round, it's huge, like massive. It's worth two rounds. You're pushing match point if you win this round. Okay, looks like you're gonna play aggressive. This is good. We'll be fade ulting. Show me a fade ult. Ah. Show me the fade ult. Show me the. Oh, this is such a good opportunity right now, man. Holy fuck. This is such a good opportunity, dude. They know where you are. This fade ult would be perfect. Fade ult, fade ult, fade ult, please. Fade ult, fade ult. Jesus. Fade ult. Hello. Oh. God, thank God it kind of worked out. Okay, he doesn't have his fade ult. Okay, what happened to him? He, he had it before. What, he used it on something stupid? He used the it eco, last round? Yeah. He used it on eco? The, he did? So. Really? What so take your nade out and just whip it. Whip it to the right side of sight. Like right away. Just whip it. As soon as you can throw it, whip, whip it over there so that they can't get into back sight. They can't get back here. Whip it right against the wall. Just so they can, you, you're limiting space so that they can take off the alt. So you're basically lowering the value of the alt at that point. I think he's long, and then you have your chamber here. So he's probably at long right now. Might fight for orb here. They're probably going to go towards showers. Um, force a close range fight. Probably a short split as well. So I think it's going to probably be A. And what I would do is I would probably boom bot off the start here. Boom bot off the start and just clear out this area to confirm it. If there's nothing there, they're probably going A right away. Okay, so that's perfect. So they're probably going A. Yeah, I would do it. Do it. Yeah, boom it. 
Who bought it to confirm? And I would probably go into showers or go into TP right now. Yeah, we're, we're in a really good position to win this now. A lot of pressure on them. We don't really need to force the issue. They can just come to us. We can definitely fight for showers here though. And same idea, if you see nothing at showers, they're probably going to be. This is good, I like this. That's a terrible alt. Okay, commit to showers, commit to showers. Commit to showers, yep. Just ignore that, commit to showers, commit to showers, commit to showers, look to showers. Jesus. <laughs> commit to showers. The showers, man. <laughs> okay, you see what I'm saying there? Yeah, like I, yeah, yeah. I could, I, I could yeah, feel yeah. him. I could feel him the entire time. I'm like, fuck. Even if he's not there, right? Okay, and you commit to this. Let's say he's not even here. You just go like this and just wrap around as they're taking short and just take this, take the flank at that point. And they haven't cleared shower, so they're still worried about this, this angle. They haven't cleared it because they all just ran up this way. So you just have a, a free path into behind the worst case scenario right they've already they've already taken the site at this point this is kind of like the same thing like you're if they're gonna take like a five man take through here or a four man take through here i don't want you taking a four man 4v1 fight i'd rather you just go back and take the 1v1 at that point and if you win that fight they know you're here and they and then they're worried about that spot that spot again real they're worried about this whole section again and then they're once again this is like the tail of tape of macro things that we talked about today is you now have this pathway into the bomb site and you have this pathway into the bomb site and all they have is like this section right here that's it so they're they're gonna feel very claustrophobic through me bumping into each other and that creates a lot of opportunities for you to win them what were your top takeaways from today i think my big problem is i'm taking fight that i shouldn't be taking maybe for ego i think it's part ego but i think there's another issue here right and i call this issue the cat protocol so do you have a cat at home yeah you ever tried shooting a laser at the wall before in front of your cat uh, yeah what did your cat do run at them yeah it oh, runs right at it it says what the yeah. fuck is that it looks straight at it one of the biggest issues that valorant players have is they're worried about the scoreboard they're worried about stats. and a lot of the time we end up being like cats we're like we're so driven by ego and our own statistics that when we see the laser this is the laser right here we go holy shit this is a kill i'm gonna go after it and you will forget any kind of common sense you'll forget any kind of smart thinking and you'll just be like i'm focusing on this laser but when you do that laser thing they get really dumb so i call this the cat protocol this is the laser right in this case the breach is a laser so you're chasing after it you're like yeah i'm going for it you'll even try to reswing it because you're like you know he's there regardless of the fact that you probably even shouldn't shouldn't even be going for that at that point so the next time this happens and you're reviewing it you just say oh cat protocol you just say it in your head cat protocol i used to have to do this a lot